Hello everyone, Tommy Marquez here with another edition of Inside the Leaderboard presented by Bear Complex. I hope you guys have had some time to recover from regionals and now that the dust has settled on the competition, I want to do a little bit of tinkering with the cross-regional comparison or the CRC as it's known and actually take that and maybe look at it through the lens of the games and its format. Now we're going to do that by only including the game, the athletes that qualified for the games, teams as well, and we're also going to include the similar scoring format that we're going to use at the games. Now it should be noted that we're not including Latin America in this one because of the equipment issues and the adjustments in scheduling and programming. Let's look at the teams for example. This is what the top 10 looks like with the normal CRC, including every single regional team. No surprises here, Mayhem's on top and the top five teams all won their regional convincingly two of which came in week number one. When we apply the games filter and rank their scores against their future opponents in Madison with the game scoring, we still see Mayhem on top, but the teams that didn't win the regional, like Torrance and OC3, move up. OC3 wasn't even in the top 10 before, but against their peers at the games, they're top five, which makes sense given their strong finish at the games last year. On the men's side, it's hard to ignore the fact that in the original CRC, Pat Vellner is the man on top, beating Matt Fraser by nearly 50%. Going further down, it's primarily week two and week three performers like rookie John Colty, but Roman Krenikov and Tim Paulson sneak into the top 10 at eighth and 10th respectively. Now, looking at the games field only CRC, the top three stay the same, but once again, Matt Fraser takes back the lead and this time by a significant margin. Joining him on the move up is Adrian Moonweiler and Andre Ganin as they jump into the top 10 and week one athletes impressively occupy five of the top 10 spots, which highlights just how strong they were when compared against the same men that they'll line up against in August. Finally, for the women, I think we can all agree that the women's competition so far is shaping up to be the best ever at the games. And looking at the regular CRC, we see familiar names at the top, with the top three all being CrossFit Games champions in Katrin David's daughter, Tia Toomey, and Annie Thor's daughter, followed by last year's runner-up, Cara Saunders. But when only the Games athletes are included, it highlights just how close things are. Now, Katrin and Tia are still out in front by a good margin, but Open and Atlantic regional champ Cassidy Lance McWhorter moves up into the top five, and rookie Laura Horvath replaces Cara Saunders for the fourth spot overall. Third through ninth is separated by just 38 points, which if you guys remember, which was less than the margin Zeke Grove made up on the final event in the Pacific. Now, if that doesn't get you pumped up for the coming battle in Madison, I don't know what will. Now, I know this comparison isn't perfect, right? But it does kind of shape things a little bit better to give us a better representation of how these athletes stack up against the same competition that they'll be against at the games and with the same scoring system. The scoring system is key because as we all saw last year with Tia Toomey and Cara Sanders, two points can make all the difference in the world. That does it for this edition of Inside the Leaderboard presented by Bear Complex. We'll see you guys in the coming weeks when we'll dive a little bit more into the games field as well as compare some very fit families. We'll see you then.